how would you like it if you were gifted with special abilities but with a twist? Welcome back to Lavender Recap for another exciting video to explore the thriller fantasy film from Sweden titled Border. If you're new here, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Be aware, spoilers ahead. The story goes like this. The first scene starts with Tina doing her duty with full attention in the Swedish custom service. She has always felt self-conscious about her appearance, although her looks are not normal and strongly Neanderthalic. She has been blessed with heightened olfactory senses. She's also able to detect various human emotions such as guilt and shame. Her skills are especially useful for the customs department since she can sniff out contraband items that humans smuggle. She lives in a secluded house along with a dog trainer named Roland in the middle of dense woods. He's her live-in boyfriend, but the two don't seem to have a lot of chemistry. In fact, Roland seems more interested in his dogs and doesn't contribute much to the household, financially or otherwise. On one fine day at the border, Tina stops a stranger, a straight-laced person who was entering the country. She suspects that he was carrying something fishy and finally finds a memory card in his mobile containing child pornography with the help of her unique olfactory sense. Her boss was immensely surprised by this discovery. When he asked how she found the memory card, she explained to him about her special ability. After hearing her story, her boss asked her to help him in continuing the investigation to catch those responsible for the illegal activities. The next day, there comes a man having facial features similar to Tina. When Tina asks to investigate his bags, he gives the bag without any hesitation. She finds nothing but a bag full of maggots and a device that the man claims is an incubator for maggots. Thus, she lets him go. But he again comes back voluntarily and asks Tina to check his bags once more. This is the time he's taken to the room at the back where some other customs officer performs a quick strip search. During the search, it's found that the man has female genitalia and a large, cool scar in his tailbone. Knowing this, Tina was bewildered and asked him who he was. He gives a brief intro stating his name is Vore, basically an entomologist, and that he will be staying in a local hostel. Tina soon goes to a nursing home to meet her human father. Tina's father is believed to be in the early stages of Alzheimer's. Her father doesn't have any similar facial features to her. She asks him how she got their scar, to which he replies that she fell on something when she was a little girl. She then goes to the hostel where Vore is staying. She finds him eating raw maggots off a tree outside. He then offers her one, and she eats it reluctantly. When they were together, they were able to sense a feeling of something weird going on between them. As a result, Vore takes the first step and tries to kiss her, but she backs away. Roland is extremely suspicious of Vore when he moves into the guest house. As Tina and Vore started to spend more time together, it paved the way for Tina to explore more about herself. After some time, Tina heads towards the apartment along with the cops where the suspected pedophiles live. There, they found a camera with a recording of an infant being sexually abused. Though they get the proof, the cops are not able to find the criminals or are trafficking the infants. Thus, the police arrest the occupants of the apartment. Vora visits Tina's house on the random night when there is a heavy thunderstorm. As the lightning is heavy, they both try to hide under a table as they are terrified by the horrifying sound. This paves the way for them to have their first kiss. After the weather turns to normal, they both go for a walk. While walking hand in hand, Tina got enough courage to confess the bitter truth about her, that she has a chromosome deformity. Because of this, it would be difficult for her to have sex and it's impossible for her to give birth to a child. Vora tries to make her believe that it's not a deformity for Tina and he tells her not to pay any heed to what humans say about her. As soon as he says this, Tina is shocked to see an erect penis emerge from her groin area. After some time, they make love and now it's Vora's turn. He confesses to her that he's a troll, the same as her. He also adds that he has come to Finland in the hope of getting in touch with a group of trolls who maintain a furtive existence here. Though there was not a proper response from him like she expected, at last deep down she was happy in her newfound identity and started to lead her life as a troll not as a human being. Till this point, many of us would have guessed the storyline to be what will happen between Tina and Vore. Will they live together for the rest of their lifetime? Will they be able to lead peaceful and successful lives as trolls among human beings? But the movie takes an unexpected turn at this point. Tina finally gets the courage and confidence to ask Ronald to clear the house and leave. But still, she was not able to decide her path. One, to go with Vore and lead a brand new life with him as trolls, and the other, to lead a life as a human being and working in the customs. After some time, Tina smells and notices that something fishy was there inside the refrigerator. Then Vore tells her that he has only taped the refrigerator shut as there is a cardboard box inside the refrigerator which contains a strange infant. He also adds that the baby is a hisi, that it's an unfertilized embryo of a troll that'll die in a few moments. Vora explains everything about his plan to her, 
stating that he's planning to use Dehisi as a changeling and he's waiting for the right time to carefully and secretly replace a real human infant with a dying embryo of a troll. The next scene is the important one as we're going to know about the pedophile who was trafficking infants. When one of the pedophiles who was arrested is being transferred, Evora comes from nowhere, stops the van and kills the pedophile. Evora then tells the truth to Tina that he has done all these things in motive to prevent pedophile from telling the cops that it was he, Vore. Shocked, right? Yes, he's the one who was trafficking human infants. He gave an amazing explanation in justifying his acts of trafficking human infants. He said that infant trafficking is actually part of a plot by trolls in order to get their revenge to humans for all the trolls that humans tortured in the 1970s. But all these explanations went in vain, as it was not satisfactory for her, who believes that the way the humans treated the trolls in the past doesn't justify such vengeful acts. She remains silent and controls her feelings. As time passes, Tina's neighbors start screaming and call for an ambulance. After some time, it comes to light that their baby was ailing, but soon they're shocked to notice that it was not their baby, but a changeling. Hearing all these things that had happened in their neighbor's house, she realizes the point that Vora has followed through on his planned deception, and she now heads straight towards the guest house. When she reaches the guest house, to her surprise, she finds nothing except a small note by Vora stating that he will meet her on the ferry. But soon she finds Vora on the deck and tries her level best to explain to him about her compassion towards humans. She also adds that just because she supports humans, it doesn't mean that she's one among them. She tries to make Vori understand that churls are capable of compassion too. She soon realizes that all her efforts are in vain and Vori is not ready to accept whatever she tells him. Thus, she swiftly signals to the cops who are hiding at the spot. They quickly come, close in, and handcuff Vori. But Vori is much more talented than perceived earlier, and we underestimated his power. He simply jumps overboard and manages to escape from the spot. His body was not also found anywhere. After a few days, Tina's father finally tells all the truth about her, who she is, where she came from, why she looks like a troll, etc. He starts to narrate the story with his life, that he used to work as a caretaker at some psychiatric hospital where the trolls were used for experimentation and they were tortured too. He adds that she's also one among them in the hospital who was kept for experimentation and her original troll name was Reva. He adopted her and decided to raise her as a normal human being. He also tells her about her troll parents who are no more now. After a few days, Tina drives to the hospital from where she was adopted and finds her parents' graves. At the climax of the movie, she finds a parcel after a few months, inside which there is a troll infant and a postcard for Finland. What do you think of this film? Do you think Vora's actions were justified? Is it really worth watching? Type your answers in the comments section. Before winding up, don't forget to give a like for this video, subscribe to our channel Lavender Recap, and tap the bell icon to stay updated with our posts. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.